Okay, uh, today we're going to talk about uh, liquidation preference and what that preference means uh, in terms of investing. Uh, essentially what a liquidation preference is, is that um, an investor gets paid back before anyone else gets paid back. They get paid back the amount of their investment or more before any of the other shareholders participate in splitting up the proceeds from selling the company. Uh, this is important because it's one of many preferences that preferred stock shareholders get versus common stock shareholders in a typical venture funded deal um, or institutionally funded deal. Uh, it highlights the, the importance of the difference between preferred and common stock in that this is an advantage uh, you'll see mathematically. It's a big advantage for preferred stock shareholders financially. Um, essentially, uh, like I said, what pre the preference means is that if I invest money in a company, I can specify that I get a certain amount of money back before we split up any other proceeds. Um, and that's what the preference itself is. Preferences range between 1x and you know, roughly 3x. They can go higher. Uh, but what that means is that if it's a 1x preference, uh, if I invested $5 million in a company and the company sells for $10 million, I get all my $5 million back before we split up the other $5 million. Um, so you can see if my company sold for $5 million and I had a 1x preference uh, up for $5 million, I would get all the money uh, before anybody else splits up anything. And we'll go through some examples to explain that. But that's what the preference is. It means I get my money first, and then we split up the rest of the money. Prefer There's three pieces here that are important to understand. The preference itself, uh, the concept of a cap, meaning how much of the company do I get before I'm capped off that I don't get anymore. Uh, and caps range in size to, in this case we'll just say we're going to use a 3x cap. And then the concept of participation is a yes or no question. This is an important one to understand. It's, it's very similar to a cap. They're actually sort of the same concept. But participating means after I get my original money back, do I then participate in splitting up the money that's left over? Uh, sometimes I do get the right to and sometimes I don't. Uh, a really important thing to understand in this case is that I can always convert to common. That's what this uh, liquidation preference is essentially asking the investor. It's saying, do you want to convert to common or would you rather take your liquidation preference? So you can either exercise your preference or you can convert to common. Uh, and sometimes it can be to the investor's advantage to do either in given situations. And we'll go through mathematically some examples, but one other thing is that it, what, you gotta uh, keep clear in your head what the investors want. Uh, the most advantageous thing for the investors with the liquidation preference is that they get a high multiple and no cap. So that means a 1x multiple for a liquidation preference. They'd rather have a 3x multiple. So I get three times my money back before we split up the rest. And no cap, uh, meaning I get to participate fully, would mean that I get my 3x back and then I continue to split that money with the common shareholders until all the money split up. So that's the best advantage to me. If there's a cap, I only get to to split up the rest of the money to a certain degree, and if there's a low multiple, I only get a little bit of money instead of getting three times my money. So they're always going to want high multiple, no cap. So let's walk through a couple specific examples here about what happens when a company sells, and we'll set some parameters around so you can see mathematically. The first parameter is the amount invested. There's ten, In this case, five million bucks has been invested, and they do have a liquidation preference. And for the first example, we'll do something real simple. We'll do a 1x liquidation preference. We'll do no cap. So there's no cap, which means I get to participate. Okay? Then we'll look at what happens when they sell the company for 5, 10, 40, or 100 million. So 5 million invested, 1x cap. If I sell the company for 5 million, preferred gets all 5 million, common gets zero. Okay? So this is primarily where a liquidation preference is used an advantage to the preferred stock shareholders. Uh, when the company doesn't do well and sells for less than the amount invested or exactly the amount invested or slightly more, um, the preferred stock shareholders in this case would get all of the proceeds. Common would get nothing. So let's say there's $5 million invested and the company sells for $10 million. Preferred stock with a 1x, they'd get a $5 million. And if they fully participated, which they do in this case, because there's no cap, there's five million more to split up. And I'm sorry, I should have mentioned that the preferred stock shareholders own 50%. So preferred owns 
fifty percent. So when you have an extra, you have five five million invested, one x preference, ten million dollar sale. The first five million goes to preferred. Then preferred gets another two and a half million because you're splitting up the remaining five, and common gets two and a half million. Again, hugely advantageous for, for perf, to the preferred stock shareholders. They get seven and a half million in this case versus commons two and a half million. So now let's get up into better outcomes, $40 million outcome. In this case, again, I'd get my liquidation preference, so I'd get my $5 million, and then I'd get 50% of the $35 million left over, so that would be $17.5 million, and common would get $17.5 million. So we're getting closer to splitting it. Remember, it's 50-50 between common and preferred. So we're getting closer to really quote unquote splitting the company. In this case, preferred is getting a little bit more. Now in a hundred million scenario, I'd get my five million. There'd be 95 to split up. So I'd get 47 and a half. And common would get 47 and a half. Okay, so that's the simplest outcome. It's preferred with a one X liquidation preference, no cap, which means they participate. So now let's do one other one. We'll make a little more um, onerous. We'll put some more, uh, slightly more complex rules in there, okay? So in this case, we will do a preference with a 3x, but we'll do a cap. And so you can see how a cap works. So uh, we will do, uh, actually, we'll do a 1x. And we'll do a cap of 3x, which means you don't participate. So this is a no. You wouldn't participate. Now, in this case, the big question becomes, and you'll see this, I get my money as a preferred until some point I want to, it's more advantageous to convert to common. So I've got a 1x preference. I've got, I can only cash that in up to 3x. So the max I can ever make if I invested 5 would be 15 million. So we'll kind of watch how this unfolds. Let's start with a $5 million sale. I've got a 1x preference. I invested $5 million. I get my $5 million. Common gets zero. Okay, that's the same. Now let's say there's a $10 million sale. I get my 1x preference, but I can only participate until I hit 3x. So I get my $5 million. I participate at 50%. So the, the $5 million left over is split between me and Common. So I get seven and a half million in this case. Um, here I'll write what preferred gets in total down here. So they get seven and a half million preferred in this case. Common only gets 2.5. And then if we do the 1x preference, if we do 40 million, now it starts to get kind of complicated. Okay, if 40 million, if I can only participate up to 3x, that means I would take my five and then I would split up the remainder, which would be 35. So I'd get, ostensibly I'd get 17 and a half, right? Well, I can't do that because they've set a cap at 3x. So the max I could get is 15. Um, in this case, I don't want 15, because if I convert to common 50-50, I'd get 20. So in that case, I do not exercise my preference. I simply say I'm not gonna exercise my preference, and preferred ends up with 20 million, and common ends up with 20 million. Okay. Same thing for 100 million. It's pretty obvious that if I if I convert to common, I get 50% of 100. I get 50 million. If I don't, if I used my liquidation preference, I would cap at 15 million. So it's greatly to my advantage in this case to just convert to common. So 50-50, and I would get 50 million, and common would get 50 million. So somewhere in between 10 and 40, you could see there's a mathematical match where essentially if I'm capped at 3x and I own 50%, anything above 30 million I want to convert to common. Um, anything below 30 million I'm going to participate up to my 15. So hopefully that makes sense. It's sort of a complex subject uh, but one you should definitely understand because liquidation preferences can be a bitch to an entrepreneur. Uh, if you have 5 million of invested money and you sell the company for 5.2 million you're not going to see, common shareholders really aren't going to see any of those dollars. So uh, really important to understand how liquidation preferences work.